choir is celebrating Ozzy's 100th heavenly birthday. And it was on March 28th of this year. Uh, he passed away 11 years ago. And, uh, you know, this is choir is all about Ozzy. There's a wonderful article in your program that you can read about, and I usually tell a little bit about him. And you probably could get up here and say my speech anyway, but uh, anyway, uh, in, the, in the program, my sister wrote the article. And my sister, would you raise your hand over here? In fact, she's standing next to my wife, Debbie. Debbie is a former Miss Oklahoma just a couple of years ago, 1972. Anyway, I'd like to share just a couple stories about Dad that I'm sure that you are unaware of. Uh, you know, he was a great vocalist, a great uh, song leader, a great teacher. But did you know that he was a very good athlete in golf and, and baseball? Uh, and now, it gives me great honor to introduce Ozzy's Capitol Hill Alumni Choir under the direction of Randy Parsons. Since you're getting inducted, we thought it'd really be an honor to, in your honor as well. 
and Robert Dennis, and, Aquire, and all the inductees this year. So we didn't quite get our 100 voices, but we still have an ace in the hole. So the finest accompanist I have ever worked with, bar none. Our own Kathy Randall Parker. Susan is the class of 1970. I'm the class of 69, and Kathy is the class of 1968. And uh, those are some wonderful, wonderful years. I noticed in the program what Nikki had written uh, that tells about Ozzy's career at Capitol Hill, just real briefly, 16 state championships. That means of the 22 years he was there, 16 of those years. Capitol Hill High School Choir was the best choir in the state of Oklahoma by adjudication. That's pretty good. So I guess we could rename ourselves the State Championship Alumni Choir. And we're honored to be a part of your program today. Every year at the high school graduation, this next song was sung. It's mentioned again in that program. You'll never walk alone. It's a great song. I hope you enjoy it today.
this next tune we're doing for you this year. You've not heard us do this before, but you've heard the tune before. I'm, I'm torn whether to say this today or not, but I think I should. From 2 Chronicles 7, 14, you'll know this verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them and I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Our nation needs that message. We, every person in this room, myself leading the way, needs that message. This song is God bless America. We want to sing it for you. We'll ask you to sing along at the end. Is that okay?
it means a lot to us that that means a lot to you. The older I get, the more my face leaks, and the harder it is sometimes to keep my composure. I think it's this simple. Love God. Love your family. Treat others like you'd like to be treated. Love your country. And pray for America. We can do that, can't we? Well, we're down to the last. I thought it'd never get here, but you probably did too. <laughs> we're down to the last part of our program. It's really been, really been fun. How was the food? But we're about to find out. They, they let us eat if we do a good job. Did we do a good enough job? I think so. So now, Sweetie, I'd like to get everybody on stage that's... Here's the qualifications. Have you ever heard the Battle Hymn of the Republic? Okay. Have you ever heard the word battle or hymn? Have you ever sung in a choir? Did you know the Bozzi? Did you... Any of those qualifications, come on up, get on stage now. Round them up. Steve, Angie, lead the way. I'm patting on you. Come on, guys. Come on up. Get on stage. Let's we'll see if we can do it. Let's see if we can do it. Tony, get a picture when everybody's up here and we'll, then we can count later. Come on up and sing with us. You can sing from there if you want to. I understand. But we're going to sing Battle Hymn of the Republic and we're going to close the program with that. Plus one more little song at the end of that you may know, just in case you do, be prepared for it, okay? Battle Hymn of the Republic, and thank you for being such a great audience.
you know, I skipped one thing, the invocation. I'm so sorry. So, there was a prayer that our, our Lord Jesus told us to pray. And all of y'all know this prayer, I'm sure, and I'd like for you to pray along with me. And it's, it's some call it Our Father. So if you will, we'll, we'll say the Our Father before we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may bow your heads, please. And, uh, boy, this, this has just been quite a evening. Inspiring singing, inspiring praying. It's kind of like Wednesday night church. But it's, uh, I see my uh, Pastor Jim way back there. I'm going to tell you. Greater calling, I think, of being an edu educator. And we're very fortunate to have some super faculty at Capitol High School. And so I'm going to introduce now, um, well, the faculty and principal of uh, Sherry Gailey. Will you guys speak? please stand? Where are you sitting over here? Where are you? Ah, there you are, back, back there. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for your dedication. So much for your dedication. And Sherry, I don't know if you're finished your meal or not, but uh, uh, you know, when I first met her, I thought I was talking to the President's Student Council. She's so youthful. Uh, not quite, not the type of teachers we used to have. But so, uh, Ms. Gailey, Sharon Gailey, will you please uh, come to the stage and make a few, few remarks? real quick uh, because I know a lot of you are used to Mr. Jewel um, and as Mr. Harris just said the Bible says something about making a melody in your heart so I will not be singing ever at any stage at graduation any of those things like Mr. Jewel would do I'm going to keep my melody in my heart <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure we were clear on that um, this is such an honor to be here and a little bit full circle for me. My own high school principal is sitting in this room um, as a graduate of Capitol Hill, Mr. Jerry Rickards. So he, I got to hug his neck today and so that was a very neat moment for me because um, he is definitely one of the best to ever do it. So to be standing here as a high school principal also and um, hoping to leave the same kind of legacy that Mr. Rickards left. Um, is something that is, you know, just a, just a really neat moment for me. Um, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of our vision for Capitol Hill this year. We have a driving word that we have chosen, and that word is comunidad, which is Spanish for community. Um, one of my biggest convictions as a human being, as an educator, is that we are called to be good neighbors. And I mean that in the verb sense of the word, not the noun sense of the word. I was an English teacher. so. Um, but that has really become our driving force is in a community, it is a group of people working together towards a common objective. And every role is important. And you guys as alum of Capitol Hill are part of that larger community. And we so appreciate your continued support and dedication to um, our students and our school. Um, and just know that we hope that you come and be a part of the, you know, present traditions and the future traditions that are to come at Capitol Hill. So thank you so much for your continued support. And thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you so much, It's uh, legacy, tradition, and pride. The Redskins made it. The Red Wolves will protect it. And I think that's a very important legacy. For school, just like this choir singing to Ozzy, 
Uh, the, the, what greater legacy is that to keep? Because this choir was nationally known, internationally known, and the first honoree we'll begin with is Judy Cooper Blaine, who is uh, receiving the humanitarian. Receiving the Humanitarian Award is Judy Cooper Blaine, class of 1961. While at Capitol Hill High School, Judy was Miss Chieftain, a cheerleader for two years, and all school cheerleader her senior year. She was voted Best Kayak Badge, Better Dance Swimming for two years, and was an old club member for three years, on the Pep Council for three years, and Miss Howdy. She also served as the Capitol Hill representative as junior home demonstration agent for the state of Oklahoma. And she was chosen as the Capitol Hill High School representative to greet Vice President Lyndon Johnson on his visit to Oklahoma. After being a very active student at Capitol Hill High School, Judy began a 27-year career for the Department of Defense, first employed at the Oklahoma Air National Guard as a Tinker Base Commander's Administrative Assistant. After transitioning to Tinker Air Force Base, her favorite position was serving as quality inspector for the B-52 aircraft. During her 27-year career, she developed a training course for new engineers and scientists at Tinker. She developed an intensive three-week leadership course for potential DOD managers, which was taught for the 18 years that the Department of Defense used her company based on her extensive military employment. She taught classes, National Conference for Federally Employed Women in D.C., Indiana, Texas, and Oklahoma. She helped manage Tinker Air Force Base Clothe a Child Christmas Project. This effort involved a year-round fundraising effort, and hundreds of children were provided with clothing, toys, and food. Judy received several awards, which included the Cotton Cadre of Employees of the Department of Defense. After receiving her master's degree, she formed her own company, The Human Connection. The company was developed to help individuals become more successful in their personal and business lives. This involved consultation with clients to design courses pertinent to the employees, developing training manuals, publishing the manuals, and then instructing the clients. Throughout the 18 years of operating her company, hundreds of students were trained. A large variety of companies used her training classes, including General Motors, banks, hospitals, and tech centers. Judy and a dear friend developed a Repair of the Heart seminar, a variety of two-day courses to help individuals share information and to encourage and support themselves and the people in their lives. She's been invited to be the motivational speaker for multiple organizations. She's taught life skills for the Girl Scouts of America and other organizations. She serves as a sponsor for Future Homemakers of America. She has served as a volunteer judge for 4-H events. Judy has two students who need special presentation skills, such as valedictorian speeches, public speaking, job interviews, and meeting boards for entrance into special career fields. She has worked with individuals transitioning from the welfare system to self-sufficiency. Throughout her life, Judy has used her time and her talents, helping others achieve goals and improve her capabilities. A determined woman, Judy's work ethic has helped her achieve many personal goals during her very busy life while she worked full time, raised a family, and continued her education. Today, she's a member of the Captain Hill High School Kiwanis Club, a sponsor for Future Homemakers of America, and is active in several ongoing projects at the school. She's currently serving on the board of the Captain Hill High School Alumni Association. She's also the scholarship representative for our high school and for her Purcell Ladies Golf Association. She's also a member of the Central Oklahoma Women's Golf Association and the Oklahoma Women's Golf Association. Judy, will you please come to the stage? Come on down, Judy.
Thank you, and thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for this wonderful reunion that we have every year. Thank you so much. Like you said, all the hard work that goes into this is so worth it when we get to see all y'all. I tried to get into my cheerleading uniform, and I did get one leg in one side. So, uh, this is such an honor to be recognized by such wonderful people. First of all, I have been so lucky in my life. First thing I was so lucky about was that I was born a United States citizen. I, uh, I never had to worry about crossing a border and dragging my wild kids with me. So I was so blessed to be born here. This is still the greatest, most wonderful nation in the world. Do we have bad stuff? Of course. Do we have good stuff? Of course we do. But you have to remember the media makes millions of dollars talking about bad stuff. So uh, please pray for our country like we've mentioned today. Again, I feel so lucky that I got to go to Capitol Hill High School at the time that I did. 61, where are you? It was the most wonderful time to be in high school, of course, that's my opinion. One of the first things that happened to me when I was a sophomore at Capitol High School, they made an announcement. Now, this is 1958, and I'm this little old goofy-looking sophomore. They made an announcement over the PA system that if you wanted to go to the state playoffs, Capitol Hill was playing Lawton, and for, if you would meet in the parking lot and donate a quarter for gas, you could ride. So I showed up, gave them my quarter, and had the most wonderful day. It was Thanksgiving Day, it was snowing, and we won. So I think that was our last championship. But it was a, it was a glorious school. I love Capitol Hill High School. I love being your cheerleader. It was like, I think I had a difficult birth because I think there was a megaphone tied to my ankle when I came into this world. I love that. I love this school. I still love this school. We're still walking the halls of Capitol Hill High School through Kiwanis and our alumni association. We're still trying to help these young people figure out what they want to do with their lives. Is it different there? Yes, it's different there. But there's still a great need there to nourish and help our young people grow in a good direction. I have been so, so, so very lucky. I got to have a 27-year career with the Department of Defense, which was outstanding. But my passion was for education, so after I got my master's degree, I started my own company, and that company was designed to help people grow in their personal and business life. First of all, I got to show them that when we come into this world, you get a life suitcase, and it's your responsibility to pack it for the journey that you want to go on. So don't blame it on anyone else if you're not on the trip that you want to be on. Again, every single morning when you put your feet on the floor, you have the power to design your attitude. If you have a good one, it's yours, and if you have a bad one, it's yours. But your attitude will change your life good or bad. Also, education. Education should be a part of our life every day, not just out of a book, but about our, know more about the people you live in this world with and know more about yourself so that you can have a better quality of life. Success, success cannot be measured until you look at the starting point. Some people get to start up here you cannot measure your success without looking at where you got your start from. So, another thing, and Melanie, she wanted me to tell everybody that she paid me to say this, that she was my best friend, but I'm not going to say that. She, she, wanted, she said she'd take me out to dinner if I'd say that. I have had so many wonderful, wonderful friends. There's a young lady down here, Stella. Stella, wave your hand. When I was going to school at night for years and years and years, uh, 
I would have to leave Tinker at 4 and be at Central State at 5, and I wouldn't have time to eat. So on my desk would be a little lunch sack, and she would pack me a little lunch for dinner. I have so many wonderful friends. They're the kind of friends that when you walk away from them, you feel like you're still being hugged. Uh, I did hear a new meaning about friends, and it's like your, your best friends are the ones that you want to be with when you're happy and you want to be with when you're sad, and they're the ones that will help you bury the body. So, so I, and last, I have been so fortunate if you say, what is your greatest success in life? I have to say my family, my family, uh, bless their hearts, I've put them through quite a bit of goofy stuff. But they're a wonderful support system. They've got me with them to Europe and everywhere, and they keep acting like they like me. So that works for me, too. Thank you, guys. I love you guys. Thank you for your support. In life, I've learned a couple of things. I know. I've learned one thing. People don't care what you know until they know you care. And another thing that's important is that all you get to take of your life, or all you get to keep of your life on this earth, is what you give away, not what you pour to yourself. And one more thing, there's not a lot of difference in people that have a lot of money and people that don't have a lot of money. It's just easier for them to pay their cable bill. <laughs> Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for this wonderful turnout and for this wonderful school that we all love. Randy Parsons and that choir, oh my word, I, I just can't say enough about them. I remember Friday nights when that 99-piece band came out, the pride of Captain Bill, and we all thought it was so wonderful. I better hush because I think he's going to go get something to put me. Thank you again for everything. This evening, lifetime achievement award goes to Robert Dennis, who is a 1962 graduate. Receiving a lifetime achievement award is Robert Dennis, class of 1962. While at Capitol High School, Robert played on the football team for four years and was a member of the Economics Club, Key Club, and Aussie Squire. After high school, Robert continued his education and began his lifetime in the military and in the courtrooms. He was also sergeant at arms for the Economics Club, and the blue frame was taken when he was director for a day for the Wildlife Department, which was sponsored by the YMCA. He applied for and was accepted in the Oklahoma University School of Law starting in the fall of 1968. However, he had to withdraw his application due to his obligation for military service during the Vietnam War. He joined the Oklahoma Army National Guard as a private in the infantry unit. He later transferred to the Air National Guard and attended U.S. Navigator School in California. He received a direct commission as an officer. He served as a crew member with the Air National Guard and flew abroad on a C-124 Globemaster, otherwise known as Old Shady. Receiving the Vietnam Service Medal and Vietnam Campaign Medals, he later transferred to the Air Force Reserve and became a special agent of the Air Force Office of Special Investigations and served as a reserve OSI detachment commander at Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma. He retired as a lieutenant colonel from the military reserves in 1995 after serving more than 27 years. After he receiving his bachelor's degree in forestry, he attended OCE Law School in my classes. While working full-time as a courtroom deputy for a state district judge, during his last year of law school, he was a legal intern at the Oklahoma Attorney General's office and earned his Juris Doctorate degree in 1973. During this time, he recruited, counseled, evaluated, and advised young men and women about admission to the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs and was selected as the district liaison officer of the year. 
For many years, Robert served with the U.S. Senator Don Nichols of Military Academy Selection Board, helping select the Senator's selection to a military academy. He retired as Lieutenant Colonel in 1995 after 28 years in the Air Force Reserves and Oklahoma National Guard. His civil career includes Assistant General Counsel for the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, District Counsel at the Small Business Administration, Assistant U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Oklahoma. He retired from civil service in 2014 after 42 years of government service. He has served as president of the Oklahoma City Chapter of the Federal Bar Association, was recognized the Outstanding Attorney of the Year by the Central Bar Association of Legal Assistance, and served as court administration specialist for the Supreme Court of Indonesia. While serving as a U.S. District Court clerk on April 19, 1995, he was in a meeting with personnel of the U.S. General Service Administration on the first floor of the Alfred P. Murrow Federal Building. After the meeting, he and GSA State Director Don Rogers were in the lobby elevator when the massive bomb exploded in front of the building, causing terrible destruction and damage. Barely able to see or breathe due to the heavy smoke and dust, he located the man he was with before the blast, and they began to crawl together out of the room. Despite personal injury, falling objects, collapsing walls, exposed electric wires, he heard many cries for help. He located two injured survivors and helped them to safety and administered first aid to the other victims before seeking aid for himself. Due to his actions following the Oklahoma City bombing, he was awarded the Director's Award for Outstanding Leadership by the Director of the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. At the direction of the President of the United States, he received the Airman's Medal from the U.S. Air Force for his courage and heroism during the bombing. On November 22, 2010, the Governor of Oklahoma declared Robert D. Dennis Day, honoring the Robert dedication to public service and for bravery and leadership during the bombing. While Robert is coming to the stage, I want to read you a statement from Bob this quote. For the first seven years of my life, my family and I lived in public assistance housing in the Will Rogers Courts in the soccer cars, known then as Packingtown. And I attended the kindergarten at Westwood Elementary School. The family then moved a little further west to Southwest 20th Street, close to the North Canadian River, now named Oklahoma River, where I attended Rockwood Elementary. I attended Jackson Junior High School and then Capitol High High School and graduated in 1962." End quote. Robert Dennis exemplifies the spirit and hard work of graduates of Capitol Hill High School, very deserving of this honor today. Robert, come on down. Thank you, Robert, for your service to our country. And uh, second, we're so proud to have you to be a member of the Captain Hill High School Hall of Fame. You're certainly deserving. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, it is a great honor for me to be here and uh, to be inducted into the Captain Hill High School alumni. Fame. I'm overwhelmed. I'm surprised and overwhelmed at the same time. And I want to thank the uh, committee for giving me this honor. And I'd also like to thank Jimmy Whipple, his classmate of mine, and also a member of the Hall of Fame who got the ball rolling and started this process. And without him, I wouldn't be here today. Thank you, Jimmy. I don't know where you are, but anyway. Uh, my family has always been a big, big part of me, and uh, they've always been very supportive, and I want to introduce them at this time, and I want to introduce first my daughter, Julie Black, is here, and uh, my son, Neil Dennis, and his wife, Gigi, and uh, my, uh, their children, my grandson, Liam Dennis, and my granddaughter, Amelie Dennis, and uh, also, my sister, Betty Dennis Staley, and she is a 1960 graduate of Capitol Hill, and she's from Shawnee, and 
Oh, I meant, I meant to mention my son and his family is from Kansas City, Missouri. Thank them for being here. <laughs> also, my brother, James Dennis, he's a 1959 graduate of Capitol Hill. And his wife, Jean Dunlap Dennis, she's a 1963 graduate of Capitol Hill. And their daughter is here, Paula Kelch, with her husband, David Kelch, over here. And uh, then their, uh, uh, their son, Dr. Greg Dennis, and his wife, Dr. Lydia Dennis, and their two children, J.R. and Anna Dennis, down here. So thank you all, all for coming here. Your presence on this day. And, uh, Preparing my remarks, I just want to say that, you know, that Capitol Hill, all of my grade school and uh, Jackson Junior High School and then Capitol Hill, we had great teachers, great administrators, and uh, great counselors, and uh, I, their dedication is uh, unparalleled. And while I was uh, moved to 20th Street, we lived pretty close to a creek in North Canadian River. That became my playground. I loved the, the river. We swam, we floated down in inner tubes. We, I actually played too much. And I didn't study very well. And it wasn't until the ninth grade that my mother got concerned because I had a note that I was uh, not doing my homework in a class. And she called the school. And that led to me meeting uh, the boys' counselor, Mr. Gardner, Dan Gardner. Some of you that went to Jackson might know him. But Mr. Gardner took me under his wing. He moved me into his one of his aides, counselor's aides. And he kind of took me under his wing. And uh, he introduced me to the school library. And we checked out books about the outdoors and, and uh, you know, all of that. And, uh, he exposed me to a whole different world. Mr. Gardner was also a, a former scout leader, and he would take his counselor aides camping on weekends. He'd take three or four boys down to the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. And uh, he was an uh, instrumental part of my life. And uh, you know, I, I, I sort of look at it as if uh, up to that point, I was a sailboat. Uh, without any sails or paddles or anything. I was just a little uh, sailboat on a big sea, and I was just going wherever the current took me. But uh, with uh, Mr. Gardner, he sort, of, he sort of got my boat and raised the sails and sort of headed me in a particular direction. And he said, you know, you, may, you might want to go this way. And that's, uh, and that's exactly what I did. One of the books we checked out at the library was a forestry book, and he said, you might consider, maybe you like the outdoors so much, you might like to have a career in forestry. And that's exactly what I did. Another person I'd like to mention, oh, I, I stayed in contact with Mr. Gardner the rest of his life until he uh, passed away. I stayed in contact with him and uh, and dear friend. Another person I'd like to mention is Ozzy Ozzenkopf. I was in his choir, and what a wonderful person Ozzenkopf was. I mean, I, his choir was just wonderful singing because Ozzy wasn't afraid to show his faith and express his faith. He also uh, wanted us to sing from the heart, sing from the spirit, sing out, you know. Didn't matter how you could sing, but he, uh, some of the songs we sing in choir in high school, I still sing. I mean, when days get tough, I just still break into a song of there is a bomb, bomb in Gilead. So it, it's just a wonderful guy. Just a few months ago, in honor of Ozzy, I joined the, uh, the alumni choir, obviously. I've got on the guard under the direction of Randy Parsons. And uh, I'm telling you, Randy is a natural leader. He is uh, he's, he's a superb musician, great director. He's funny, he's witty, he's, he's fun to be around. And the choir is just wonderful, and I'm really enjoying it. And it's kind of like when I'm practicing and singing with the choir, I think, gosh, 
I'm back in Halsey's choir in high school because that's what it reminds me of. Well, I wanna, don't want to take too much time. I just want to say uh, thank you again. This is a great honor for me, and um, I'm a proud Redskin and always will be. Thank you very much. She was determined that her students would learn. While at Capitol High School, Barbara was chaplain of the student council and Kayai Pep Club. The pianist from the Morning Inspiration was a member of the Latin Club and Economics Club and played tennis in the Girls' Oak Club. She received scholarships from Oakland College of Women and the Masonic Organization, which resulted in her Bachelor of Science degree, majoring in elementary education and a Master of Education with a major in Special Learning Disabilities with a 3.3 grade point average for four years. This was the beginning of her lifelong service in educating children and adults while continuing her own education at OBU, CSU, and OCCC. After attending several real estate schools, she earned her basic real estate license and a broker's license. Many of the special education kindergarten, fourth grade children she taught during her 31 years of education, were diagnosed as autistic. Eli Rabbit, Bill Bunny, was a classroom vet for children who fed and watered him, teaching the children to be responsible, like picking up things off the floor and pushing in their chairs. Their once a month field trips include the National Cowboy Hall of Fame in Western Heritage Center and riding a city bus to a fast food restaurant. He also met with the governor of Oklahoma in his office some of the expenses were paid by small craft items the students created and sold. She used her personal struggles with her health issues as a lesson in persistence. Barbara feels a special kinship with them because they share struggles to overcome difficulties. You're smart, you can do this. You may have to do this a little bit differently than someone else, but you can do it. We go on and make the best of it. I want to give them the tools for discovering self-worth and respect. I want to introduce them to the marvelous and exciting world of learning. I want my students to be the very best in whatever endeavor they chose. For most of our kids, Bill Bunny was the only pet they had ever known. President and Vice President of Campa, Campa Lota, Barbara has received multiple honors for her devotion for special children and adults. Some of them include 1977 Teacher of the Year for Fairview Elementary, while a transitional teacher for first grade. Grade level chairman for more public schools, presenting programs on readiness and reading skills and conducting meetings. 1985 million dollar producer in real estate sales. Autism speaker for UCO classes. Outstanding first year teacher in Anaheim, California. State president of the Oklahoma chapter of the Federal Council for Exceptional Children. National, state, and local levels of the Autism Society of America member of the American Federation of Teachers, member of Oklahoma Education Association, and president of Delta Kappa Kappa, president and vice president of Kappa Kappa Ialta, the Moore Chapter, Oklahoma State Department of Special Education, advisory panel, teacher of the year for the Oklahoma City Public Schools, 1998-1999, and foundation of excellent finance, 1991. State list for EDs, certification in autism and a speaker for classes at UCO and the national, state, and local levels of the Autism Society of America and the State Autism Conference. She was a supervising teacher for the conference for the state and local 
exceptional children's homes. As state president of CEC, she designed the Quilt Square, which was displayed in Washington, D.C. at the CEC convention. The Oklahoma State flag is to the left of center. Barbara and her husband, Lindell, traveled extensively, visiting all 50 states at least twice. The picture you're viewing on the screen, this is one of their many trips to Hawaii. Barbara, will you please come to the podium? Good job, Barbara. Good job. Thank you. Special lady, let me say for remarks just prior to your speech. You know, uh, when I finished middle school in 1964, and I took a two-year residency, I came, and we found out we had two special need kids. So special ed teachers has always been very special to me. We had to drive from Southwest 79 to Britain, because there's only one special ed teacher in the whole county. So thank you for all your endeavors as a father of the special, special ed children. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let me begin by saying that I really appreciate this honor and I appreciate the committee and I appreciate Armin Edelman for nominating me through this and I appreciate Francis Fleming Lauderette for typing up everything for me because I couldn't have done it without you. And also let me say that I have been a nervous wreck over my comments. <laughs> so, uh, I have just been fretting over this. You'd think as a school teacher that I would be used to making speeches and talking, but for some reason this has just really freaked me out. Uh, I want to say thank you for everyone that's here. It has been so wonderful to be among so many of you and so many of you that I've gone to school with, and the pleasure that I've taught so many of your children. That has been one of the biggest pleasures that I've ever had. And the fact that your children have gone to school with my daughter, that has been a big pleasure. And I'd like to introduce you to my daughter, Molette Pennington Rosnick. Would you stand? Stepdaughter, Linda Blanton Dye, would you stand? And I want to just tell a real quick story about Millette. When she was in, Millette went to school in Moore, graduated from Moore, and when she was in seventh grade, her teacher invited all the parents to come to school to visit one of the classes. I asked my principal if I could go, and he said yes. Mollette said, oh, mother, please don't come to school. Well, I went to the class, and when all of her friends saw me come, she was glad I came because she realized that, you know, it was cool to have her mother at school. And, and she made lifelong friends with a lot of, of the kids that I had in school. I also want to recognize Keely. I don't know what your name is now, but it was Keely Birdwell. Keely was one of my students at Moore when I taught Moore first grade. Keely, will you stand? I don't know where you are. Keely, Keely Berger. And I went to school with Keely's mom and dad. So, so I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, so that was a real pleasure. Uh, and I just want to share with you, just very short, I'm not going to talk very long. Uh, just kind of a real short story. Back when I was growing up, you know, uh, it's been mentioned, you know, some of the things that we did as child, as, as children, we did grow up in the best of times. You know, we've all talked about when we get together how we could do things that we didn't have to worry about the dangers that are out there today when we were growing up. I grew up around Oliver Park, and we used to play during the summer, all day long at the park. We played. When we would walk home from school, we didn't walk over the bridge. We walked under the bridge, down through the creek. We didn't have to worry about anything like that. Uh, we would have the best of time. 
When I grew up, we had an old building behind the garage. I would play in that little building, and that would be my school. I would collect things at the fair, and we would have school out in that building. I would climb on top of that building. Now today, I'm scared to death of heights, but I would climb on top of that building. On top of that building, not too far from it, was the clothesline pole. I grew up with Peter Pan. Peter Pan was my idol. I believed, if you believed long enough, hard enough, you could fly. I would get on top of that building. I would stand on that building. I would jump from that building to that clothesline pole, grab that pole, and believe that once I grabbed that pole and I swung on that pole, I would take off like Peter Pan. I can't tell you how many times I did that. Never worked. <laughs> but I kept trying. Well, last week, the Qantas Club went to Georgetown, Texas for a conference. I just want to leave you with a few parting words. One of the speakers at the conference left us with these parting words. Do better than you did yesterday. So as you leave here tomorrow, or leave, you, leave here today, whatever you did today, tomorrow, do better. Find your purpose in life. Now, sometimes our vocabulary will say, remember when? Get that out of your vocabulary. Say, what if? Forget about remember when. Re say, what if? So, thank you so much for this award. It means a great deal to me. And everything that I've accomplished in the past, my husband, Lyndall, has been here beside me. I lost him six years ago. I miss him every day. Lyndall, this is for you. Thank you. Our next inductee goes to the pre president's uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. To the J.W. Mashburn Community Leadership Award. This award, award is given to uh, uh, community involvement. And uh, Mary Ruth, where are you, girl? Uh -huh. there. Okay. Will you come forward? Receiving the J.W. Mashburn Community Achievement Award is Mary Ruth Barnes, class of 1965. She was an author, master storyteller, and an artist. Mary Ruth was a leader at Jackson Junior High before entering Capitol High School, receiving numerous awards. She was well liked by the faculty and students. Her dedication to study was paramount in achieving her goals. She was also involved in extracurricular activities, the Honor Society, Economics Club, Y Team President, Swimming Princess, Latin Club, Future Teachers of America, and the Student Council. Mary was honored by the Capitol Business and Professional Women's Club based on her attitudes of judgment and courage, talents, and initiative. Her subjects in high school included advanced mathematics, science, and Latin, planning to become a math teacher. She also considered engineering as a possible career. She was a member of the Sigma Chi Iota Science Club and Mu Alpha Theta, the math club at Capitol Hill High School. One of her high school friends described Mary Ruth as seeing the world with the inner beauty that shines through her artwork, a love of the environment, animals, and art that reflects both her native history and her family's native history. Another high school friend wrote, I love her spirit, enthusiasm for life, love of her family and friends. For her to want to preserve her rich heritage and history of her family and her book is priceless. She's an excellent artist, decorator, cook, writer, and confidant. After high school, 
Mary Ruth earned her bachelor's degree in minoring in pre-law with high honors, then a master's in education as a reading specialist, phonics-based program. After college, she taught high school and college English, arts and computer science for 14 years, sharing her knowledge and skills with future generations. She is a believer in lifelong learning. In 2017, Barnes Art was selected for the registry of the Native American artists at the Heard Museum in Scottsdale, Arizona. Mary Ruth is a member of the National Watercolor Society. Several of her short stories and watercolors are in issues of the journal Chickasaw History and Culture. She has received numerous Chickasaw Artist Awards in watercolor and pen and ink. Her watercolors are on display at the Chickasaw Nation Medical Center, the Artesian Hotel in Davis, Oklahoma, Welcome Center, and in the Capitol offices of the Chickasaw Nation in Oklahoma City. In 2017, Barnes retired from a career as Director of the State and Asset Services State of Oklahoma, Southwest Missouri, and Wichita, Kansas National Office of the Plan Giving Business Unit of the American Cancer Society, where she helped raise more than $35 million for cancer research, receiving the top performer and top in the nation for awards. She also developed a plan giving territory, producing $2.5 million in annual bequests. She developed donor relationships and stewardship for a company in three states. She developed and managed a movement management program following strategic donor identification, cultivation, solicitation, fulfillment, and stewardship, trained directors in Colorado, Kansas, Texas, and Arkansas to successfully achieve move management strategies and goals. She also served as director of development for the advancement office of East Central University in her hometown of Avon and held responsibility for fundraising that resulted in one of the three largest donations in the history of the school, more than eight million dollars. Her efforts in fundraising and her vote to reach out to others has successfully made a big difference for the university and for cancer research. As a published author, her book, Flight of the Little Bird, is a story of her first American family based on accounts of real people and events from the days of the Indian Territory. This book tells the story of her great-great-grandmother's journey in Indian Territory and her bravery in the face of heartbreak and misfortune. The book won an Oklahoma Gold Addy Award for the cover design and the book trailer. Mary Ruth dedicated her book to her grandfather, Harry McSwain, who taught me the quiet excitement for life and filled my soul with the Chihawa, Iowa, God's Father. Mary's grandfather had passed away from leukemia and she dedicated her painting to her grandmother who said she would ride off into heaven on the horse. Butterfly, in English, the monarch butterfly happens to be the symbol for leukemia in the Chickasaw language. Her outstanding work with the Chickasaw Nation throughout the years has resulted in several awards, including 2015 Dynamic Woman of the Year, in 2022, she became a member of the Chickasaw Hall of Fame and was honored by Governor Bill Anatomy, the governor of the Chickasaw Nation, who commented perhaps even more impressive is her commitment to use her many talents to serve others. Her work in the community will have a positive impact for generations to come. Mary Ruth has won numerous awards for her art and short stories. She's known for her flowing, freestyle, vibrant depictions of outdoor scenes first Americans and horses. Mary Ruth has recently been recognized as the 2022 member in the Honor Guard, which is located at the Chickasaw Cultural Center in Sulphur. The garden is dedicated to the men and women who have made the Chickasaw Nation successful. She participates in numerous Ada community organizations, Ada Chamber of Commerce, Rotary Club, Ada's Business and Professional Women, where she was honored with Woman of the Year. She has served on her church board, Rotary Board, the Executive Board of Boy Scouts of America, and the Ada Arts Council. She's active through the Philanthropic Education Organization, PEO, and Kappa Kappa Gamma Alumni Association. She's a wife, mother of two sons, Wiley and Shelby, who both work for the Chickasaw Nation and grandmother. As a lifelong equestrian, in the first photo, this is Mary with her futurity champion. Their family farm, was the location for a horse show Mary and Mike produced with a group of lesson kids, 
wearing their ribbons in the barn after a horse show. Mary Ruth, will you please come to the stage? It is absolutely a huge honor to be here among the fellow Capitol Hill Redskins. I've been a proud Redskin, Redskin all my life, and to receive this honor is more personal to me than any other honor I've ever received. We walked those hallways together, you and I, and you know what? They were wide hallways, if you remember that. And I, I kept thinking, about what I would say about those wide hallways. And one thing was, not only were the hallways wide, but our love of each other was wide, our faithfulness to the school and the school spirit was wide. And so I'm very proud to say that this is one of the most prestigious honors I've received in my lifetime. I went to um, Columbus and then Jackson and then Capitol Hill, and I felt like I received the best education anybody could possibly have. A little different from Barbara, I did walk to Columbus. I didn't go through and under the bridge, I went over it because I felt like that um, that goat, little goat gruff or whatever it was, was under the bridge. So I stayed on top of the bridge if I could. So, but I like that sharing, Barbara. One of the things that I wanted to review with you, but before I do, I want to welcome you all to welcome my family that's here. I have my eldest son, Selby, and his wife, Jackie, and um, my youngest son, Wiley, and his wife, Rachel, and their two lovely children, Evan and Layla, my grandchildren, and then my husband of 50 years next year, Mike. So if you'll welcome them, I appreciate it. recently gave a similar speech to um, uh, to be inducted into the Chickasaw Hall of Fame and it was a very special event and I, I've learned over the years living in Ada, Oklahoma how important it is about my tribal her heritage and so I, I revere that to you as something that we all should appreciate about Oklahoma and the tribes that live here and the Native Americans that share their story here. I spent the first um, 11 years, my husband took, um, in the first 20 years of marriage, 11 corporate moves. So I was a school teacher for 14 years and, and I never got a retirement because he would pick up and move. He was with the same company and of course I went with him and I get a teaching job. It just worked out that way. And so I followed along with my life, um, supporting his job and supporting my educational background and working. And you say, well, what happened to her? She's changed careers several times. Well, I found when I was in Colorado that I became very good at grant writing. So when my husband uh, retired in 2002, uh, we were in Colorado. We decided we'd move back home to the 160 acres that my parents left me in Ada, Oklahoma. And that was just fabulous. I couldn't wait to get back to my roots and my family, and my mother was still alive at the time. So uh, we moved back, and I started a career in development and grant writing, which I had done for the school district in Colorado. And so I was very uh, fortunate and blessed to raise almost uh, two million at the hospital when I upstarted the foundation for Valley View Hospital in Ada. And then after that, I was uh, recruited to go to East Central in their development office. And I got the largest gift of eight and a half million for the School of Education at East Central University. And then I got recruited again at age 60. Now, many of you could say you changed a full career at age 60, but I did. And so I went to work for American Cancer Society because my grandfather had died of leukemia, my Chickasaw grandfather. And I felt it was important that we fight this battle. And many of us in this room have fought and become survivors. So I was very fortunate to retire with them. I put 10 years, I retired at 70, 
and I raised $35 million for cancer research. So I'm very pleased and honored that that was the last part of my career. But then I decided I didn't want to quit working, and I decided that I would add my bucket list to what I wanted to do. And so then I moved on and um, pursued a career of art. Now, some of you who know me said, Mary Ruth, I don't ever know that, knew that you rode a horse or that you could draw, but I could. <laughs> and I had won some secret awards for my artwork from a school in New York, and I decided I would try. And I was fortunate enough to um, paint a picture of my grandfather's horse, Holtapushi, which is means butterfly in Chickasaw. And I didn't realize when I painted it at the time that the monarch butterfly was a symbol of leukemia. And that particular painting won uh, nationally with American Cancer Society and is now currently on the caregiver brochure for leukemia patients. So I was very proud of that. So then what was the other bucket list I had? Well, I had an English degree and I taught many, many, many students, even at the college level, how to write. So now it's my turn. And so I spent six years of research and accomplished what I think is one of the most dedicated books to understanding the Dawes Commission and the struggles that the Native Americans had coming into Oklahoma and having their land once again threatened to be removed. So this was very personal to me. I want to thank the committee for this award. It is just such an honor. Uh, Marla Smith Mallory worked diligently, I know, to help with this, and all my friends uh, with the Capitol Hill reunion. Um, I want to share with you just real quick, and I'm going to be brief, uh, some remembrances. Um, our theme in 1965 was All Our Tomorrows. And I think that that fits a lot with today because we're living all our tomorrows. We had the largest gradu graduating class. I think it was 987 that had ever occurred um, in 1965. We had tough administrators. Um, Mrs. Kincaid was my English teacher and man, was she tough. And of course we had, we had the great choir and Ozzy did a fabulous job supporting all of us with that. We were the first graduating class to switch our gowns from gray to maroon. I don't know if you, some of you remember that, but we, we fought for that. Uh, we raised money. Um, uh, the choir recorded the first stereo album, and the Southwest Kiwanis Club bought 100 albums to help us raise money for the choir to take a trip. And then I was in the play, The Mouse That Roared, if many of you remember, and that was also a fundraiser. So see, I was doing fundraising way back then. And that money went to rebuild, or re, excuse me, restore the student lounge, and we made it kind of a 60s theme, if you all remember that. And then we went on our senior banquet to Val Jeans and Shepherd Mar Mall, and I think, uh, Billy Grindeloup did a skit at that, I believe, and it was pretty funny, Billy. He still is pretty funny. <laughs> Looking back on some of my memories, I want to tell you, I got to go on KEA TV and talk about the clubs at Capitol Hill when I was a senior. Um, and I got to talk about the Honor Society and the Math Honor Society, which was Mu Alpha Theta, the Sigma Chi Iota, which was a science club. So I really, really became what I call a red skin. And, you know, this is my theory. Once a red skin, always a red skin. Is that not right? Yes. So we grew up in an area where we didn't have a lot of money, but, you know, we were so polite. We said things like, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, and yes, sir. And when we answered the phone, I was taught to say, uh, hello, this is a Scots residence, and we couldn't answer the phone any other way. I miss that part of our lives because we were very courteous and considerate with each other. I'm thankful uh, for all my CHS friends. They've stayed with me all these years, 
And if I see them and I haven't seen you in a while, you still make me feel as warm and welcome as you did the day I was with you in high school. And that's very, very special to all of us to have that feeling. You know, we had those wide hallways, but we were all friends with each other. We met and we enjoyed each other. So I'm gonna leave and close with a, a big thank you to the committee and the board and my family and my friends at CHHS. And I'm gonna give these special words to you. I think you'll remember them. Here's to alma mater. May she always be in our hearts forever, standing proud to see her archways where we entered, her wide hallways where we love so dear. So here's to CHHS. Our, our, our alma mater we hail so proudly. Thank you again for this beautiful, beautiful honor. President's Award this year goes to Angie Hedrix Hendricks, class of 1969. Receiving the President's Award is Angie Hedges Hendricks, class of 1969. In 1970, Alice Bowell Hedges class of 1947, and Bentley Hedges, class of 1947, opened a travel business in Alice's mother's duplex on Southwest 29th and Chartel. By 1974, Bentley Hedges Travel expanded to three branches in the metro area. They would expand their business to nine offices in Oklahoma and Texas with over 50 employees. Angie is her daughter who would attend Capitol High School, where she led her in synchronized swimming and varsity cheerleading, having been a cheerleader two years. She began her travel career stamping brochures. Her mother had told her, if you don't work, you don't eat. So Angie attended multiple travel knowledge training courses, including TWA, American Airlines, and many destination courses, working her way up the ladder. Her passion for travel resulted in her becoming general manager of the nine branches. As a planning committee member for her 10-year Capitol High School reunion, she reconnected with Roy Steve Hendricks, class of 1969, and they were shortly married thereafter. In addition to a husband, Angie received a wonderful daughter, Jenny, and would later have two additional beautiful girls, Stephanie and Audrey. Also in 1979, Angie was promoted to executive vice president of the travel company that served not only South Oklahoma City, but represents individuals and companies from across the country. Steve and Angie, to attend a dinner at Edinburgh Castle. A note on the rented attire agreement said to wear appropriate undergarments. In 1992, Alice passed away, leaving her half the company shares to Angie, making Angie her father's partner. In 1995, Bentley announced Angie would become the president and CEO of the travel agents and a majority stockholder, making the company a certified woman-owned business. Angie has since continued to encourage her employees to continue learning the ever-changing travel industry to make their agency stand apart from the rest. The agency has won numerous awards from airlines, tour companies, national trade associations, Oklahoma publications, and political figures. Her company has a professional employee base recognized in the industry for its longevity and its first-hand expertise regarding the destinations of business and leisure travel, plus outstanding service levels as quoted in the Marketeer magazine. Angie has contributed to every level of Bentley Hedges travel dynamic growth from pioneering escorted European vacation to promoting cruises to becoming the first travel agents in Southwest United States to implement automation for arranging air travel. A quote from Oklahoma Woman. Angie Hendricks has been recognized for contributions to the Rotary Club of South Oklahoma City and is also a Paul Harris Fellow. This 2009 Project Woman of the Year and 2012 Employer Support of the Reserve and Guard Patriot Award and received in 2013 a Vocational Excellence Award. 
Several magazines have recognized Angie and her agency. A 2009 issue of Enterprising Woman listed her as Woman of the Year. 2012 Travel Leaders on her Agency of Excellence and a 2013 issue of OKCBiz.com awarded her first place as Best Travel Agency. In 2012 and 2021 and 22, Travel Leaders Network Honor Bent Bentley Hedges Travel with her Agency of Excellence Award, a prestigious honor awarded to her 18 top agencies and their national network of over 250 associates. In assisting the Capitol High School class of 1969 with local and destination class reunions and has helped many other travelers over the years in scheduling corporate and government business trips, world travel, college away games, weddings and vacation. This devotion to service has helped families create lifelong memories. She volunteers her home and time for the annual Wings of Rolling program with students from Japan and young professionals from Argentina. She's been a mentor to women's travel agency owners from Rwanda to the Institute of Economic Empowerment of Women's Peace to a business program. She also served on the Early Wine YMC Council and continues to actively serve on the board of directors for the South Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. Angie looks forward to many more years of planning the next trip with her loyal clients, welcoming her new clients, and of course her next trip on her bucket list every day is an opportunity to create a wonderful and memorable journeys to see the world, meet new friends, experience new cultures, and make lasting memories with loved ones. Angie, come on up here. Come on up here. such a wonderful video out of the assortment of pictures and pieces of stuff that I gave them. Um, I am humbled by what a great story you created. And I look at this and I think, now who is that? That, that can't be me. I first thought this award was for my cheerleading and synchronized swimming um, and my amazing athletic ac accomplishments at school. Um, but now I thought, no, that wasn't what it's for. But we really thought we were really good, didn't we? Yep. My, my fellow swimmers, my class of 69 is down here as well. And um, thank you guys so much for your friendship. Appreciate you. I'd like to introduce my family with me today. Um, first, my loving husband, Steve, class of 69. <laughs> Be sure, always go to your class reunions, you know met again at the 10-year reunion, and um, he encouraged me every day. He was part of every one of these things, these accomplishments. He's been part of it. He has encouraged me, and he supports me in everything. I'm still working, and he brings me breakfast while I'm working, and so anyway, he's awesome. And our girls, we have Dr. Stephanie Aldred, who came from Louisiana to be here today with me and also my daughter, Audrey Hendricks. Um, they've been so supportive and understanding out of all these 50 years here. Independent and just absolutely awesome women, absolutely. Um, I also have a gentleman here, Mr. Johnny Patton, who is Audrey's friend. <laughs> That's all she'll let me say. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny, for being here. And my dear Uncle Billy, my Uncle Billy, Bill Falwell, class of 53, who is still part of the village that helped raise me. We haven't moved very far from home, and I love you so much. Um, my dad's wife, Bonnie, Bonnie Hedges, and we've worked together for almost 23 years. And she continually supports and encourages me, too. And thank you for loving my daddy so much. And my daddy, my daddy. I shared this honor with you. 
Um, we have, you're the most amazing guy, and you've really challenged me to keep up with you. My dad's 94, let me just say that. Right now. Yeah. He, uh, he comes to work every day. I get him until about 10 o'clock, but now he's pushing it till about noon. But anyway, he comes to work every day, and you challenge me to keep up with you and to make you proud, so thank you. Um, and thanks to you and Mom for hiring me in 1972 and for giving me a job and the opportunity to see the world and to have the wonderful life that I have. So, And there's so many others who aren't here today that have made these accomplishments possible, and I owe many thanks to all of you. I also want to thank God, my Savior and friend, who put me in these situations in my life, and at the time I thought, I can't, I can't do this, I can't get up on the stage and do this. But he is with me every step of the way, and he gives me guidance and the words to say somehow. At least I didn't seem too foolish too many times, but, uh, but still, opportunity is there for that. Um, each one of these things that I have done has been a blessing, but I'm the one that really benefited from that. Um, God certainly had his hand in our business too over the last 50 years for sure. Just when you think this is it, the banker's at the door, he's coming, he has always made a way and saved us so many times, which, and we've survived all this time. Um, like Dad said, we're like a Timex watch. We take a licking and keep on ticking. So, one of the best jobs, one of the best parts of my job is the adrenaline rush of working with clients and their travel plans, that's for sure. It's like living vicariously through their travels and um, just the rewards that I get from working with them. It's been great to work with them and help to make memories that last a lifetime. I see some of my clients right there. Hi. <laughs> uh, when I am visiting with new clients and getting to know them, I always ask, where did you go to high school? Did you grow up around here? And of course, I always share that I went to Capitol Hill High School. I'm the class of 69. I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of that. Um, this is my hood. This is my hood, Capitol Hill. And you are my people. Um, look around at all your fellow Redskins and see the legacy that continues because of you and the Alumni Hall of Fame. All of you are part of my history and my future, and I thank you all so very much. Thank you. Well, I tell you, it's been a delightful evening, and all the previous inductees. You can see how much talent that we have that uh, from Capitol Hill. We've always been real proud of our athletic performances, but we can see that we can equalize those by all the wonderful, wonderful inductees we have this evening. Please stand. Here's to all of our may she always be in our hearts forever, standing proud to see her archways where we enter, her halls we love so dear. Take your meds. Your meds are very